right so we learned that if two matrices a and b are similar a is equal to s b s inverse so s is already invertible this is what we are writing invertible then a and b share the same eigen values same characteristic polynomial share the same eigen values and so on the same eigen values geometric multiplicity is same as algebraic multiplicity and so on dot 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 all right so let's look at an application of this all right so application so let a be an m cross n matrix b be an n cross m matrix so if i look at a times b is defined which is an m cross m matrix and b times a is also defined which is an n cross n matrix we want to relate the eigen values of the two matrices so m to relate the eigen values of two matrices fine so you can see that for example if i look at this uh, simple example that x is say a uh, n cross 1 vector y is another n cross 1 vector fine then what we see here is that x y transpose x y transpose if i look at this is a matrix of size x is n cross 1 y transpose is 1 cross n so it is an n cross n matrix 1 cross n so this is a this is an n cross n matrix fine what about the transpose of this if i not the transpose look at the other way around if i want to look at say y transpose x y transpose is 1 cross n all right and this is n cross 1 so this is going to give me a 1 cross 1 matrix fine so we would like to claim so claim the eigen values of xy transpose which is an n cross n matrix n cross n matrix fine r y transpose x with multiplicity 1 multiplicity 1 and eigen value 0 with multiplicity n minus 1 all right so it is an n cross n matrix so i can do this so i would like you to try that out yourself at least you can see here that if i'm looking at this matrix so i have defined a as xy transpose corresponding to y if i look at this set y perp which is all z belonging to rn such that z is perpendicular to y or y transpose z is 0 then its dimension of y perp is n minus 1 so implies there are n minus 1 linearly independent vectors say z1 z2 zn minus 1 z1 till zn minus 1 for which a times zi will be equal to xy transpose times zi which will be equal to x times y transpose zi which will be equal to x times 0 which is 0 which is same as 0 times zi all right so you can see that 0 is an eigen value n minus 1 times this you can see fine so the idea is to proceed with this and then build up the idea so let's look at ab now so i define my matrix so i look at this product matrix product i am 0 minus b all right so recall what is the size of b so i is m cross m so this is m this is m b did i write what is the size of b did i write i think i wrote it as n cross m so i think it is n cross m i think b is n cross m yeah so i wrote it correctly so b is this i want to multiply this matrix so this is my s that i am looking at in some sense which is an invertible matrix because 
it is a lower triangular with diagonal 1. So, S is so this is S is invertible fine. I am looking at this multiply this with this matrix 0 0 0 B A. So, look at the size of this matrix again B is here. So, B means B is the size of B is n cross you have n here n here. So, this matrix multiplication makes sense to you. So, this is same as same as just multiply it out. So, this into this is 0 this into this if you look at you get A here this into this is 0 and minus B A plus B A is 0. So, this is this matrix. I would like to write this also as something here all right. So, this will go on the right. So, I want to write here I m here minus B here 0 here I n here. So, that this is again S for me that I am looking at. So, I want you to check here that this is nothing but A B A 0 0 all right. So, this is my matrix A C this is my matrix E what we are saying is that S C is equal to E C which is same thing as saying that E S which is same thing as saying that C is equal to S inverse E S implies C and E are similar implies they have same set of eigenvalues eigenvalues counted with multiplicity all right whatever the multiplicity we need to count with respect to that fine. So, let us understand this now. So, what we are trying to say. So, we are saying that E and C are similar. So, let us look at the matrix E fine the size of A B is I think m cross m this is n cross n. So, there are if I look at the eigenvalues of this eigenvalues of E they are eigenvalues of so they correspond to eigenvalues of A B and 0 coming how many times n times fine this is what we see. If I am looking at C now if I go from C here fine. So, eigenvalues of C of C are all right. So, 0 here is of the size m cross m. So, their eigenvalues of of B A and 0 0 0 repeated m times fine. So, we are saying that these two sets are same and therefore, what should happen? The non-zero eigenvalues are same. The so this implies the non-zero eigenvalues of A B and B A are same, and each of them has the same multiplicity. have the same multiplicity and for 0. So, this is about the non zero eigenvalues for the 0 eigenvalue eigenvalue we cannot say about the multiplicity why you cannot say about the multiplicity can you give an argument. So, the important idea is that we cannot talk about multiplicity because there is m of them here n of them here. So, the idea is that in C and E they are same, but when I go to A B and B A there is this which extra which is needs to be taken care of all right. So, for the 0 again well you cannot say about the multiplicity of it of it as eigenvalues of A B and B A even though they are equal even though they have the same multiplicity for C and E all right. So, in C and E they have the same multiplicity 
but when I come to BA and AB, I have a problem, all right, I cannot guarantee it. And this is what is reflected in the previous one, that here, this is a 1 cross 1 matrix, so its eigenvalue is only y transpose x, all right. But here, if I look at this matrix, which is x y transpose, I wrote somewhere, I think, x y transpose, all right, then this is an eigenvalue, so this is a non-zero eigenvalue or this could be the same, y transpose x could also be 0 for us, I do not know what it is because that is not given to us, but what we see is that y transpose x is an eigenvalue here and y transpose x is also an eigenvalue here, all right. But there is a packing of extra zeros here because of a, b and b, a and the extra zeros that we are putting in the proof in this argument, all right. We are putting this extra zeros to get our argument, is that okay. So, that extra zero is being passed up to get our result and hence 0 may be there or may not be there as an eigenvalue of a, b or b, a, is that okay. So, that is all. Now, we will look at the next idea. So, let us recall that in the previous class we looked at normal matrices. All right. We proved there. So, we proved that given any matrix A n cross n normal, there exists an unitary matrix U such that U star A U is diagonal, which is D and this is nothing but diagonal of say D 1, D 2, D n eigenvalues of n, fine. So, we wrote it in two way, first thing we wrote was identity, we wrote identity as, so we took u as u 1, u 2, u n, n cross n matrix and we wrote i n as u i, u i star i is equal to 1 to n and when I multiply this to a, this gave me a is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n d i times u i u i star and from there we concluded that the action of a on u i is nothing but multiplying by d i, fine. Now, so here I am looking at with respect to everything is being done with respect to the eigenvector. So, here it is with respect to eigenvectors, all right. So, let us recall what is called the decomposition of a vector space. So, decomposition of a vector space. I did not do it separately, but what we said was that if V is a finite dimensional vector space, V a finite dimensional vector space with an inner product. inner product, then we can write V as W direct sum W perp or where W is any subspace or any proper subspace subspace of V. So, I did not write it this way directly, but we had the notion of projection where the projection on P w on w and projection on w perp. So, we are the matrices of the projection that we had and the idea was that since v is finite dimensional, w is finite dimensional. So, I can get a basis of it, get an orthonormal basis. normal basis of W, extend it to get a basis of the whole space V, extend it, extend it to get an orthonormal basis of V, fine. So, this part, the linear span of this part is this, alright, the linear span of this part is this and this extension 
just remove the first part whatever is left out the extended part gives you the basis of this part is that okay so we have two things and what we are trying to say here is that when i write something as say if i write v as s direct some t s and t are subspaces what basically i'm trying to say is that this implies that any v belonging to v can be written uniquely can be written uniquely as v is equal to s plus t for some s belonging to s and t belonging to t that is one thing the other thing so s and t span the whole thing also this is what we mean by s and t spans v we also have that since there is a direct sum here it means that s intersection t is just the zero vector and nothing else is that okay there are some spaces fine i'm not saying they are orthogonal i'm nowhere using the word s and t are orthogonal i'm just saying that i can write them uniquely and their intersection is just the zero vector all right and that intersection the zero vector is the one which gives you that it is a direct sum or the expression here is unique is because of s intersection t being zero so example you have r2 you can take r2 this is your r2 take any two line this and this find l1 and l2 then r2 is linear span of l1 l2 so just write it l1 direct sum l2 all right because l1 itself is a subspace l2 is also a subspace so you can write any element of r2 in terms of an element of l1 and an element of l2 all right the way we do for x and y similarly you can do it here also fine what we want to stress here is that that this part that we wrote here this one or this one was dependent on the eigen vector so this was dependent on the eigen vectors all right what we would like to say is that they are not only dependent on eigen vectors in place of that we would like to say that they are independent of the eigen vector so we want to claim so claim the expression is independent of eigen vectors and depends only only on eigen spaces fine so let's do that part so what we are saying is all just i'll just write it down all right so define so that alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k be the distinct eigen values of a values of a so these are the distinct eigen values of a and we are saying that a is normal that is also given to me fine so a is normal implies a has n eigen vectors n linearly independent eigen vectors fine so therefore if i look at i define wi is equal to null space of a minus alpha i of i then dimension of wi so the so what can then i can write rn or no we are looking at cn then you can write cn as w1 direct sum w2 direct sum wk all right this is what is important because they'll give me certain eigen vectors so each of them it has n linearly independent eigen vectors so each of these eigen vectors they have to correspond to some alpha i and therefore they will be in some null space wi and hence you can write cn as this so n linearly independent eigen vectors means that these eigen vectors eigen vectors form a basis of cn over c all right so this is what we are writing fine so therefore we can write a in terms of that and the matrix a what we are saying is that the matrix a here looks like so the action of a on any xi is is alpha i of xi whenever 
x i belongs to w i all right. So, this is what we are saying 1 less than equal to i less than equal to k. So, what saying is that action of a on w i is by multiplying by alpha i is that ok. So, now let us rewrite this in the language of Hermitian matrices all right. So, Hermitian what happens to Hermitian matrices. So, now let us so we did it for normal matrices we want to write it for Hermitian matrices. Hermitian matrices. So, first thing we would like to say is that if A is Hermitian means A star is same as A, then what happens is that look at this expression x star A x all right. So, I should also write here I think Hermitian matrix assume lambda comma x is an Eigen pair fine. So, this implies A x is equal to lambda x fine. This also implies just take the star on both the sides. So, A x star is equal to lambda x star and this implies x star A star is equal to lambda bar x star which is same thing as saying that x star A is equal to lambda bar x star all right fine. So, look at carefully we are saying that lambda comma x is an Eigen pair. So, that implies that A x is equal to lambda x we are taking the star on both the sides. Once I have done that then the star tells me that it can, I can rewrite it as x star A star is equal to lambda bar x star, but A star is same as A this is the way we are using Hermitian all right till that stage we are not using Hermitian. So, we get x star A is equal to lambda bar x star. So, now I want to compute this x star A x by two methods. So, one is look at x star A x like this which gives me x star A x is lambda x. So, it gives me lambda times x star x all right I get this part fine. I also want to get use this now. So, if I want to use this I can write this as x star A of x. So, my associativity is like this I write this as x star A is lambda by x star of x which is same as lambda bar x star x. So, we are saying if you look at these two we are saying that this implies lambda times x star x is equal to lambda bar x star x. What does this imply? So, initially when we solve for matrices we are looking at eigenvalues at the initial stage we do not know whether the eigenvalues are real or complex all right. So, initially we cannot guarantee that the eigenvalues of a matrix are real. I cannot guarantee this part, but what it tells me that all right what it tells me as x star x is not equal to 0 why it is not equal to 0 x is not equal to 0 as x is an Eigen vector fine. Since x is an Eigen vector so therefore x star x is not 0 and therefore I get from here that lambda is equal to lambda bar. So, this implies that so if I take lambda as so this implies so if lambda is equal to a plus i b imply implies this then lambda is equal to lambda bar implies a plus i b is equal to a minus i b and this implies b has to be 0 all right. So, implies eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix always real fine. So, I would like you to see that nicely nothing special here we just had a Hermitian matrix. So, the condition was A star is A from there using that this is there is an Eigen pair we wrote A x equal to lambda x took the star we got this wrote it this and then we replaced A star by A, this is what we did and then just a small calculation tells me that lambda equal to lambda bar because 
x is not the zero vector. All right, fine. If I had started with in place of Hermitian, if I had started with S Q Hermitian, fine. The same thing would have been true here, other than something here. So for S Q Hermitian, this part will become x star of a. It will become minus a here. Will be equal to lambda bar of x star, and this will imply that I am looking at x star of a is equal to minus of lambda bar x star. That's all I will have. All right, and therefore when I want to look at this part, this part will tell me that lambda times x star x will be equal to minus lambda bar x star x. This will imply that lambda plus lambda bar is zero, and therefore I will get that this implies. Lambda is either zero, is either zero, or purely imaginary. Is that okay? So this is what you have to be careful about. There is the same calculation, nothing special. We are doing the same thing, but things have changed because of this minus coming into play, and the argument is the same that I used here. Here b became zero because a plus i b is equal to a minus i b. There it will become the other way around. It will become a plus i b is equal to minus a plus i b. So minus a and plus a will cancel out. I will get that b has to be either zero. Means a has to be zero. So b can also be zero. If a and b are both zero, then I get zero. If b is not zero, I get purely imaginary. Is that okay? So you have to be careful. A small implication of this that I would like you to write here is implication or important. Let A belong to say m n of R, fine. Since it is a real number, so we can talk of we can talk of symmetry. Symmetric means A is equal to A transpose, fine. What we have seen, what we have seen here is that the eigenvalues of A of A are real. Fine, and to get the eigenvectors, and to get the eigenvectors, we need to solve. What we need to solve? We need to solve a minus lambda i of x is equal to zero. Now everything here, all entries here, are real numbers. And this will imply that. So this implies that we can choose x to have all real entries. Fine. So I would like you to see that for a symmetric matrix, A is symmetric means with real entries. That real entries is very very important. So A is symmetric with real entries. Then A is Hermitian. So A has real eigenvalues, so I can choose my x here, all right, the eigenvectors to be having real entries, and hence in place of saying that A is unitarily diagonalizable, I can say that there exists a unitary. So there exists. So we can say, say, there exists an orthogonal matrix U. So that U star A U is diagonal, which is D. The eigenvalue is all right. So in place of saying that I can get it using unitary, we are saying something more. We are saying that we can do it using orthogonal matrices. All right. So orthogonal matrices means I have got all the entries to be real. So over real fields itself, I can do it. I don't have to go to complex numbers. Is that okay? So. that finishes the idea of looking at things from the point of view of normality and so on at the last step what i would like to just tell you that what is called the spectral theorem for self adjoint operators a spectral theorem for self adjoint matrices or operators operators you are looking at finite dimensional that's very very important so self adjoint basically means a star is a so it is a hermitian that's all we are saying so what we are saying is that one there exists a unitary matrix 
u such that u star a u is diagonal which is same thing as saying that a is equal to just look at this fine so it is u d u star is that okay that's one thing two i can decompose identity as projection into w1 projection into w2 direct sum projection into wk and what are w1 wi wk so wi is null space of a minus alpha i of k where alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k are the distinct eigen values of a okay and we are doing it over r all right so if a was symmetric it is over r if it is hermitian it has complex entries then it is over 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 c r third a is nothing but so we are writing like this a is equal to alpha 1 times p of w1 projection onto w1 with multiplied by alpha 1 alpha 2 p of w2 plus so on plus alpha k p of wk fine so the a only depends on the eigen spaces it does not depend on the eigen vectors that's very important and we are able to write decompose them in this form that's more important that there is this i and what are these pi's so understand pwi's are projection matrices and projection matrices means so here for us we are looking at orthogonal projectors only so we are saying that pw transpose or here it will be a star because we are looking at complex is same as p of wi and p of wi square is equal to p of wi so so they are idempotent and symmetric is that okay so that's all for this lecture next lecture we will look at something more all right thank you